Okay, it's day 11 on our naked sailing to Easter Island adventure. Uh, we lost the autopilot again this morning. I'm not really sure what's happening uh, and I don't want to stop the boat and take it all apart again. So we're just steering with bungees the rest of the way. I think it just can't handle the stress of the waves because the waves are very big today and the wind is very strong. So I think what's happening is it's just slipping and it just it's not, not made to handle this kind of pressure. So the bungee system's working fine and I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I don't think it's broken, but there might be something wrong with it. It might be missing some teeth or something, I'm not sure. We've got 966 miles to go of about 2350 or 2400 when this is all over with. We're sailing along nicely. We've taken some big waves today. This has been the day that's been, that has the biggest waves. We've been averaging about 170 miles a day. So that's 5.5 days more. So it looks like we're gonna be around 16 days. Much better than the 21 that we uh, first thought. And as long as we don't, don't have to slow down too much for these waves, there's some crazy stuff going on right now. I'm hoping this is ind indicative of a, a wind shift so we get a little, a little bit more easterly winds and we can make some more south. It's an autopilot, not this guy. James is messing with uh, the autopilot again. So the last days we have actually not been using it at all. It um, made a funny sound, I think two days ago. So we just set up the bungee cords again and that's what we've been steering with to Easter Island. Um, right now the wind shifted to the east and we just can't get it right so we, we can't get it to stay on course. So James is messing with the autopilot again and uh, it doesn't look too good. The plastic is getting brittle and it might just not be made for what we're doing. The seas are, have been pretty big the last days three meters, James says five, but I think it's, you know, more three meter waves. And um, yeah, the thing just is really flimsy. That's what the truth is. So we're just kind of sitting here right now as James is trying to repair the autopilot and save what can be saved. Can it be saved? It's not repairable. I thought I was able to fix it, but I fixed it and, and then it just ripped all the teeth off the belt, off my new belt. That's my second one, that was my spare, so we're, we're I don't know what else I can use. I, I don't know. I'm not gonna let it beat me, but man, it's just frustrating, dude. I, I'm sick of this thing. This is like the 10th time I've taken it apart, and then I spent two days fiberglassing it all, and we've been steering with bungee cords. I'm, I'm super tired. It's been two weeks of this. Get it done. So after James fucked with the sails for four hours, got really pissed off and me fucking with the sail for an hour, um, we're finally on the right track with the bungees and we're moving pretty good now. And it's actually getting a little chilly now. As you can see, I'm wearing my sweater. James is wearing his sweater and the coconut oil that we brought from Ecuador is um, actually solid now so there's definitely a change in temperature here we're really excited to see Easter Island and I'm about ready to um, arrive yeah the winds have been very variable for the last since yesterday really 
it started with all the squalls coming through all day long and today is the same way. We have to mess with the sheets a lot and adjust the sails. We dropped them just now, raised them back up. Um, yeah. 20 degrees south. 20. And a half. And we started off at like what? Five? Five, yeah. Something like that, four or five. We've gone a long way. We've gone 1,800 miles now. We have uh, about 600 left to go. A little less, five, five something. I think when we're done, as long as we get there, without doing too much meandering, uh, we'll, we'll have gone 2,350 to 2,400. So I'm gonna go outside now and show you the squalls. There's three different uh, systems right now. One coming towards us, one just passed, and the other one no clue what that one is doing. Um, so you get an idea of what it looks like. Are you gonna sew the belt now or what? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, this is the old autopilot belt and it's just w much better made. So I'm gonna take some of this stuff. If you guys haven't ever heard of this stuff, Tear Aid, get it. It's really expensive, it's like $30 a roll and you only get a little bit of it, but yeah. it is magic stuff, magic. It'll fix your sails if it tears. So one of these, I'm, I'm just going to cut off a little piece of one and then fold it on itself and tape it back together and then I'm going to sew it back together and then I'm going to tape over that. That sounds like a good idea, James. It broke because the actual track that the belt goes around broke in half and then it separated and so it had a sharp edge that this caught on and it just pulled until it cut it. So this is definitely cut. Uh, the other belt after one day, after a few hours, ripped the little feet off of it because it was just poorly made. It's too bad that this one broke like that. Hopefully it'll stay together when I tape it. You're not giving up on the autopilot, huh? I'm gonna fix this m what? Every time I get really mad and I'm like, ah, I can hate it, I, I wait for like an hour and then I'm like, I think I can fix it. <laughs> and I, I fixed it once, I fixed the track. The track's good now. But now that belt was crap, so I'm gonna try, man. I'm gonna keep trying. I don't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. And I think this will work. So the crazy thing about this stuff is when it sticks together, it's fucking on there, dude. So in case you're wondering why my filming is so bad, we're going like 10 knots right now over these huge waves. So cut me some slack. So here's what I've done. I've taken a piece of this Tear-Aid tape, put it across the top and the back, and then I've stitched it with my whipping twine alternately. One, two, three, Three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. Like going through the little feet instead of in between where I think that it's gonna be strong. This thing is like, I can pull hard on it and it's not gonna break. Uh, I think what will break it though is if it goes into the wheel and the wheel catches one of these things. So I'm gonna put another piece of tear aid tape on it. That's a good idea, I was thinking there. On the, on, but that's it. Confident? Yeah, I think if I if I position this big fat piece on the other side from the wheel, because the, yeah. the um, wheel only turns like three quarters of a turn. So it's only going like this much. We still have enough coffee to hand steer to Easter Island, I think. Yeah. We're not gonna have to hand steer until we get closer. But once we get closer, we're gonna have to. Pairs I did are good. The um, the track is now strong and it's not breaking. But now the belts are breaking. So that means that the autopilot's working too hard, I think. So you had it too tight here? Yeah, I might have had it too tight, I'm not sure. You see how when I when I turn it down it tensions the belt a little bit? Yeah. So at a certain point you can't slip it anymore. So when when this one goes up, this one tensions the belt strongly on the here, and you can't, like, I can't move it. 
when it goes down, I should be able to move this. Yeah, there you go. No. Yeah, I can't turn it to the right. Even fully untensioned, that's a problem. So it's binding right on these repairs, right where I repaired it. It needs to be perfect. I didn't make it perfect, I just made it pretty good. I can feel where it's binding it. Like right here, where, it's, where it hasn't been repaired, it's going smoothly. And then right at a repair, it starts to bind a little bit. I'm gonna have to take this thing apart and um, no. sand it again, yeah. It's okay. We just accidentally tagged with the spinnaker. We're not horribly good at this, but uh, we haven't given up yet, so we're gonna, gonna try one more time, but on the other side, on the other tack, and see whether that turns out better for us. The wind is pretty, pretty variable, so it's not only our lacking skills. It's the wind's fault. with a bunch of squalls all around us and with kind of a doldrum feeling so very variable bit, variable bit uh, very variable winds if any and um, now we're actually flying the spinnaker can you believe it now we're, we're traveling at five knots um, almost in the direction we want to go and it's just beautiful we've always had it too tight it seems the clue is really long now we've got like eight meters of uh, clue right now and before that we we cut it down to like five or so so we always had it really tight um, it works really well like that right now the waves are coming from behind we're flying the spinnaker it's so different than when we started the trip where we were beating the whole time and yeah which was fun too we're 400 miles from Easter Island right now so we've gone already I think uh, last night we cracked 2,000 miles that we, we had gone. What a blissful afternoon on the open ocean. We're running out of produce too. Coconuts are still good. We got a bunch of coconuts. They're very good still. Some oranges and lime. Too bad scurvy. Yeah. That's it. How many nuts of wind is this? Like 15? of really light wind the last the last three days and we were still able to move. That's really nice about it. So the passage has been great. We're 300 miles from Easter Island. We've gone over 2,000 miles. The biggest thing that broke was the autopilot. But we've been able to balance the boat Partly because it was designed well, partly because it was built well, and partly because we know what the hell we're doing. 
very, very small part, 5% of that part. It's been, it's been an interesting trip and very, very beautiful, very opening, but also very trying. We've done so many circles. The autopilot went out after day three. It's day 14 and we've made it happen. We didn't turn around. I, I, I'm very proud of us for that. So it's like two in the morning, day, what is this, 12 or 13? I was on watch and we just, um, we just hit 10 knots like 10 minutes ago and then we're smoking eight, nine, eight, seven knots and then just all of a sudden it died. And so usually when that happens, it makes me a little nervous because it means something's funky with the weather. And so I went and looked outside and there's a black line of clouds and that's not good. So I just triple reefed the, oh, here it comes. You hear it? I just triple reefed the main with Kimmy. I woke her up, we triple reefed. And now we just got hit by, that's probably 20 knots. Hopefully it's not gonna get over 30, but we're double reefed on the jib and triple reefed on the main. If this ever happens to you, you're moving along and the wind just dies. Reef. <laughs> you hear that? It's like shaking the whole boat. This is a lot of wind. Wow, it's ripping. I'm gonna take this outside just so you can get an idea. It, it, there was zero wind just two seconds ago. <laughs> it's shaking the boat all crazy, so. It's, this feels pretty powerful. Uh, we're almost to Easter Island. We've got about 250 miles to go. Uh, we're over 20 degrees now, so the storms should get bigger, like this. And uh, we're ready for them. I'm glad I reefed down. It's, it's pretty nasty outside. All right, so that's that. I'll let you guys know how this goes, probably tomorrow. Well, we survived the night, sunrise. Hey, look what I fixed. Autopilot. So I sewed the belt. It's not very strong. Well, it's, it's strong, but it's got like a, like a fat part because I, I wrapped it in tape uh, after I sewed it. So I got to really baby this thing. Uh, we'll see. I think any faster than like five knots and I'm, I'm just going to have to balance the boat with the bungees again. But for now it's working great and we're doing three knots towards where we want to go which is the first time in forever. <laughs> so we might actually make it, I think we got like 220 miles to go or something like that. But let's watch this sunrise, it's going to be a good one. So we're ready to greet day 15. Uh, I was thinking we, we could have arrived today, but without the autopilot and with the variable winds, we got uh, probably two more days. So it looks like it's going to be a 17 day passage. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a little tired, but uh, I'm ready to start the day. I'm going to go make some coffee. Uh, thank you Spectre Watermakers for that. And clean up the flying fish from the boat. Wind is coming in and it's gonna be a beautiful day. Beautiful day. This is the squall line that just went through. There's another one. Let's see if we got any flying fish. I heard someone hit the boat, a big one. Something big did. Yeah, here we go. Day 16, naked sailing to Easter Island, and the sun just came up. But somehow, the moon is still out. You should be asleep. I don't understand how you still 
I don't sleep. I don't need sleep. I've decided that I'll sleep when I'm dead. Okay, apparently James with the sails the whole night. It's hard to believe since we didn't make any progress. I think we drifted most of the time and he's just making us up. But um, I slept so I can't prove anything. Our track looks like we've been heavily drunk, heavily under the influence. My shift hasn't been any good either. We've got a little wind now, but it's coming and going and changing and the sails are all over the place, especially the jib. Oh yeah, I dropped the main, that's why it's been so silent. <laughs> I just threw the fishing line out. Not that I expect anything to bite, but um, just, you know, to show my goodwill. The other pilot is still broken. The bungees are still not working. We're not going in the direction we really want to go. We had enough of the whole sailing to Sri Island trip. We want to get there now, drink some beer, eat some burgers. Um, we also don't have the possibility of motoring there because um, we're not close enough so that we would actually have the range to motor there. But we don't have an autopilot, so we would just make circles. It's worse go. than hand steering. At least if we were hand steering, if we had wind, what the f is going on? Oh, we just tacked, babe. Yeah, I'll pull it in. This is our track the last couple days. We've gone, there's only 147 miles to go, but you can see how we've gone all over the damn place. There's Easter Island. And we're just west of it, and we can't get there. Even though the wind's coming from the east. The wind's blowing this way. Let's go see what Kimmy's doing. Get the sail in. Even though there's wind now. The last 100 miles are the hardest, or the last 300 miles more exactly. We've been losing wind three days ago and um, without the autopilot, the boat can't... We have to sit out here the whole time, we have to hand steer basically. Um, James did that the whole night and he's at his limit physically and mentally. We were trying to do 200 mile days at the beginning and now we're struggling making a hundred mile days. That's kind of frustrating. So we're 35 miles away now, 34, and we're headed straight for it. And we still can't see it. And we have a bet that whoever Get sees it first, gets a hundred bucks to spend however they want on Easter Island. And we're like, every time we go up there, we're like, I see it! Just to f with each other. And uh, yeah, I, we can't see anything. I, I remember when I was in LA, I could see C Catalina Island most days, and that was like 36 miles away. I'm surprised that the visibility is that bad here. Or maybe it's just really a low island. I think that's the thing, it's just really, really low. Well, Catalina is not exactly a high island, is it? Pretty. It's got mm -hmm. some. It's got a couple big peaks on it. I don't know. We should be able to see something. Look at the Polynesia Guide. Maybe it says how high it is. I don't know. Doesn't Does say. it say? Mm -hmm. but I can definitely and clearly see Easter Island right in front. A very, what a feeling. What a feeling, baby. Wow, seeing land after all this time, it's intense. And the piece of land that we actually wanted to go to, most likely. 
<laughs> you mentioned it's pit cairn. <laughs> I'm kind of sad it's over. We had all this. We had all this work planned. Oh yeah, we're gonna make five episodes while we sail to Easteron. We got tons of time, of time, and nothing else to do, right? Oh yeah, maybe we can even paint the deck underway. We're gonna make all these ridiculous plans. And what I did is I edited, I edited three quarters of an episode. James finished it, and that's about it. I read a book. Too. I read a book too. And um, <laughs> that's about it. We had we just had two and a half weeks of laziness. And it was great. I was a little worried this long passage on this boat, but it held up perfectly and I'm super excited to see Easter Island. We I mean, get this baby, it's like the most remote island on the planet. And we made it. We did it. We sailed there. <laughs> Overall, amazing, amazing sail. The boat did an awesome. Uh, we it had, was nice, we could have had a little more wind, but apart from that... Yeah, the last like 300 miles we were going really slow, but um, nothing major broke except the autopilot, and that, <laughs> that a added a lot of stress, but we were able to still balance the boat and not have to hand steer, so that was really, really... I didn't even know that was possible on a cat. Now this is going to be the last night out to sea for um, about three weeks. I guess, or four. Next adventure is Easter Island, obviously. Let's see how bad the anchorage is. We'll find that out tomorrow. James supplies the anchor chain to the anchor route or the other way around, however you want it. And um, we'll have to stay in Easter Island to get parts for the autopilot. Um, so we'll take our sweet time exploring that incredible and magical famous island in the middle of nowhere. I think we can we can get that part in three weeks for sure. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, I'd like to thank Luke, my rigger. Dude, thank you for the rigging. Thank that, you so much, Luke. That made me sleep well at night and it got us all the way to Easter Island and it's gonna do well for the rest of the world, man. I really, really, really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you very, very much. I thought about that a lot, too. I was just looking at these, um, what are they called? These eyes here? Yeah, the dead eyes. That, that shit is sturdy. I feel really confident, too, in the upper part of the boat now. So check out Kraken while you're at this. This is sponsored. This is sponsored. Right, here's Kraken's information. Uh, I also want to thank our patrons. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. And <laughs> we just sighted Easter Island after 18 days at sea, and I'm so elated right now that <laughs> this is a crazy feeling. This is a first. I've never had this, and I'm super happy to be sharing with you. Yeah, me too. I'd like to thank my first mate <laughs> for dealing with my bullshit. Yeah, you were pretty good. You did it. That's so far. You did it, babe. I'm a little, I'm a little melancholic to be honest. That our little sailing, naked sailing around the Pacific adventure is over for now. But we'll get enough of that in the future, I think. We got 1,200 miles to Pitcairn. Yeah. And then another 700 Gambier. Get ready for some more sailing footage. Yeah, subscribe if you haven't yet. At this point. We love you guys. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Patreons a cool video like a whole um summary of the last two weeks is coming up for you hopefully tomorrow or as soon as we get internet and you haven't seen it yet in the next few days yeah i'll show you in a second i think we need a voiceover over that too actually yeah. thank you guys how cool is this you know what i'm not looking forward to putting on pants <laughs> <laughs> That is the perfect ending! <laughs> <laughs>